it's Tian and welcome back to another video on my channel and welcome back to another episode of Sing and Squat. So when it comes to weight loss, you hear your usual eat a cleaner diet, calories in versus calories out, exercise. Now I've been a personal trainer for 8 years so I can vouch for the fact that yes, it is not a conspiracy. Exercise and eating in a caloric deficit is going to lead to weight loss if that is your goal. However, I'm going to provide a slightly counterintuitive, a bit contrarian approach to weight loss that might surprise you. I'm sharing this because of my personal weight loss experience and also from my experience as a personal trainer. Over the last 6 months, I've been able to lose 5kg. For me, my weight doesn't fluctuate a whole lot. So to be able to lose um, 5kg over the course of 6 months is a huge drop for me. This is the most amount of weight I've ever lost in such a short period of time. I mean, even as compared to my bodybuilding days, you know, this is quite a significant amount. It's not my goal to lose weight or to look any way. You know, my goal and aim with fitness has always and forever will be for my mental health to have energy to feel good and confident about life. However, I also want to provide other factors that are not really related to exercise and diet that might be hindering your personal fitness goals. Now the first factor I'm going to discuss is stress. More specifically, the hormone cortisol. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why you might not be seeing results even though you're eating well, you know, you're exercising, you're doing all of these things. So when you're stressed, your body increases its level of cortisol and it has been scientifically proven to result in an increased appetite, emotional eating, increase in fat storage, and metabolic changes. Now this is really important, cortisol affects your insulin. Now insulin is the hormone that is in charge of regulating your blood sugar levels. So what happens is that when your cortisol increases, your insulin is also not regulated and when that happens, the sugars in your body that are meant to get regulated by insulin starts to get stored as fat. For women particularly, in the the abdominal area. So you know that little like layer of you know love over here, the little layer of love and I think it's cute. That is a result of high cortisol levels. 2021 was a really stressful period for me. I was only getting like five to six hours of sleep a night and I would wake up you know feeling extremely tired, very bloated, I feel like a whale. What changed for me I think in 2022 uh, and it's something so simple, what changed for me is really prioritizing my sleep and I know that that might probably be one of the most difficult things for a lot of people but I cannot stress the importance of like prioritizing sleep so nowadays I'm like you know what I have this work to do but you know what it can wait the world can wait whenever I don't sleep I'm just like okay do I really want to increase my cortisol do I really want to store like excess sugar do I really need the stress and water retention of tomorrow it's not worth it it's not cortisol directly affects water retention and bloating so the higher the cortisol the more likely you are to store water. For all the story is find your means of stressing less, reducing your cortisol and the weight should come off. This is a bit of a controversial one um, and only applies to women so men if you are not interested you can like skip it a little bit but I think it'll be interesting for you to know if you have you know sisters, girlfriends, wives. I stopped taking birth control pills I started taking birth control in 20, I want to say like early 2021 uh, for my cystic acne because I had really bad hormonal acne. I was breaking out, very stressed, and I was prescribed uh, birth control pills by my dermatologist. But what I did experience when I started taking birth control pills is that I started to see a steady increase in my weight. I did notice massive bloating, especially around the times of my period. Now, I do know that there are people who also take birth control to regulate their hormones and to regulate their weight gain, so it actually has the adverse effect for some people but for me and for what I've actually heard of with a lot of my clients and friends is that yes birth control pills actually causes some amount of water retention and in many cases weight gain. It was about like the end of last year to like mid-ish to end of last year where I decided that I did not want to be on any kind of long-term hormonal medication. I personally am not a fan of any kind of long-term hormonal medication. Um, that's just my personal preference. So I decided that I was going to get an IUD and this could also be in a whole different video because I feel like I get asked this question a lot. Um, birth control is something that seems to be like a bit of a taboo topic. And once I had the IUD, I kid you not, I dropped 
3 kg in one month. I did not do anything differently. I wasn't eating differently, wasn't working out any differently. Interesting lesson to learn from this is that hormones play a huge role in your weight loss and weight gain. And I think it's often overlooked, especially for women. So it's not always good to, you know, weigh yourself every single day and be like, hey, why is my weight, you know, one kg heavier or one kg lighter? Um, don't worry about these minor fluctuations, especially during the time of your period. And if you're on any kind of like birth control or any kind of hormonal medicine because chances are your hormones are playing a huge role in why you are bloating or why you are gaining weight. If this is something that is a concern to you, I would suggest going to see your doctor or endocrinologist um, who can better explain this to you. This is probably one of the most underrated weight loss tactics but it is the cheapest, most effective and fastest way to see results. Drinking water. Now this might seem a little bit of like a no-brainer. However, I had this one client who doesn't drink any water at all. Like she drinks, you know, two cups of water every single day. You can tell that from her skin and from her energy levels that she's severely dehydrated. So what I did suggest is that she carry a water bottle. I physically like, bought her a water bottle. It was like, drink this and for a whole week, like I want you to take photos of you drinking water for me and you're going to drink at least two liters of water every day. And I want to tell you that two liters is not even enough. Like you should be drinking somewhere from three to four liters of water every single day to stay hydrated, especially if you live in a very humid country like Singapore. So she did that. She drank two liters of water every single day. And I kid you not, in that one week, in that one week, she lost three kilograms. That was such a, I mean, weight loss was not really our intention. My intention was her to get healthier, but she saw that, you know, there are a lot of the reasons why her water was holding on to so much water is because she was not drinking enough water to reduce that, that swelling, to reduce that inflammation, to get out all the water retention in her body. Sometimes when I'm like, I have a headache, why? I'm probably dehydrated. Or I'm feeling really tired and lethargic, why? Because I probably haven't drank some water. If this is not a habit of yours, try to make it a habit and you'll see a significant difference. Something else I did is increase my TDEE. It stands for Total Daily Energy Expenditure. So this comprises of your basal metabolic weight, your activity levels, as well as the thermic effect of food. Now I know it sounds a bit complicated and I don't want to go so much into the science of things. Your TDEE, um, I didn't personally change a whole lot. Only changed my basal meta metabolic weight based on my food and my exercise output. So what I did look at was the thermic effect of food. Things like chicken breast, fish, eggs, and avocados. So these were four major foods that I started to eat. I realized I started to eat more of in my lunches and in my dinners. And by doing that, I wasn't so concerned with like counting the calories. I was just ensuring ensuring that I had these food groups in my diet. I did start to increase my protein intake and that is probably why I have increased my metabolism. A lot of people always ask me like, what do you eat? You know, you must eat super healthy. I actually, yes, I do eat healthier than an average person, but you would still see me eating my meatball. I would still eat, you know, McDonald's. I still have pizza and I still have pasta. And the difference is that I don't look at food as something that I cannot have and that it's evil and I shouldn't eat it. I think a huge mindset shift that I hope a lot of people have is to shift from that mindset of scarcity to abundance. Yes, I can have that meatball, but I'm also going to get a side of green juice so I can get my micronutrients in. Eating things in moderation is equally as important and I know striking that moderation might be a bit difficult for you. This is pretty much what I mean by having a balanced diet. So it's not necessarily restrictive. In fact, I'm eating in abundance. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting in shifting your perspectives on weight loss and showing you main factors that might be hindering your personal weight loss progress if that is your goal. And to show you that there are so many other factors affecting your weight, especially hormones that are not exercise or diet related. In fact, something else I didn't really get into is that your genetics plays a huge role in your personal weight and where your fat is distributed in your body which is why I want to show you that it's not always the best thing to focus on the weighing scale when it comes to staying fitter and healthier. Hello update, my fitness song is coming along. Uh, the next song that I'm putting out is going to be a bit of like a fitness TikTok-y song. It's basically how I feel like 
when I don't want to work out or how my clients feel like when they don't want to work out. I always wanted to come up with like a fitness jingle pop song that really just drives home my, my message. So um, I'm really happy that after multiple revisions over the course of I want to say four years, I've been able to you know, put, it, put it into a proper concrete song and I'm really excited to share it with you. All my other videos, please remember to give this one a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you never miss a notification every time I post a new video on my channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye! Love you so much!